Ah. Uh... Hey, Joe, what's up with you? Besides half the world aiming nukes at heavily populated areas. Zoinks, I've had a rough couple weeks. Why can't we all just get along? I told you, man, nothing ever goes the way you want in the Middle East. Well, you and your oil wars didn't help the situation. You can blame me all you want. This shit's been happening since the 50s. It's pretty tough to pick a side. It's not like either Palestine or Israel's free of innocence or monsters. Don't play coy, Barack Hussein. We all know who you're rooting for. Why would you think that? I bombed more innocent Muslims than any president. Bro, chill. Sheesh, for once I'll admit I was wrong. That's even cap for me. Oh, that's rich, George. At least I never bombed America. Prove it or lose it, buddy. Can you guys stop talking about people dying? That's literally all I hear about all day, every day. What would you rather talk about, ice cream? Well, yeah, but nobody seems to like it as much as I do. It's Halloween. We gotta do something Halloween-y. Do you actually consider yourself a man after using words like Halloween-y? Shut up. Halloween is the perfect holiday to escape the horrors of real life by replacing them with cooler horrors. How about a Halloween movie to your list? I could go for that. How about we do a draft? Oh yeah, we haven't done a draft since breakfast. I saw that one. You guys are idiots. Grits are goaded. Well, this time, it's much more subjective than food. We'll each pick five Halloween movies, and the folks in the comments will have to choose who has the best Halloween playlist. So what constitutes a Halloween movie? Does it just have to be scary? Clearly, you're clueless in the nuances of the Halloween genre. Halloween movies have aspects of horror, but just need to be festive and give you either a trick or a treat. Apparently, this is Joe's turf. What the hell do you mean by that? If you get a scare, then you've been tricked. If you see some cleavage, then that's the treat. There's some truth to that, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to be anything specific to make a Halloween movie. Most of them are horror movies or creature features, but there are even children's movies that work just as well. Sounds like too much tolerance. In my mind, the only good movies to watch around Halloween are ones that are truly scary. It's the season to embrace your inner fear. I see your point, but any movie you want to watch while curled up in a heavy blanket on a chilly autumn night is welcome. The way I see it, only movies worth re-watching every year at Halloween are the top tier slashers. Nothing better than seeing a bunch of college kids get opened up by a mentally ill dude in an iconic mask. Okay, well let's get started. Unlike the movie tier list we usually do, let's try not to spoil as much so the viewers can experience the films on their own. Sure, but what's this order about? How come Joe gets the first pick every time? Because I'm the president and you're not. We're going from newest to oldest presidents. No fair. I get last pick? Don't worry, George. We're doing snake drafts from now on, so you'll get two picks at the end of round one. I guess I can work with that. Don't worry, George. Knowing Joe, he'll totally botch the first pick again. So what are you going with, Joe? I'm thinking it's going to be a tough one. It should be easy. Hurry up. It'll be Christmas by the time you think of one. Give me a minute. I deal with Putin all the time. I don't need you rushing me. You got this, Joe. Kung Fu Panda. No, no, Nightmare on Elm Street. Good save. That was almost brutal. Of course, Sleepy picks the fucking Sleepy Slasher. Good pick. Wait, which Nightmare on which Elm Street? Gotta stick to the original. There we go. Good pick. With literally every movie available, not so much. Here comes Donnie's Daily Cope. Sure, it's a classic. But do you really watch Brett Cooper in Dreamland every single year? You're goddamn right. But I thought it was Ben Shapiro's sister. Come on. This movie had a ton of creative things that sets it apart from the rest. The infamous finger knife glove is still the most unconventional main weapon for any horror villain. Honestly, I was expecting a lot worse from Joe. This movie had good effects for its time. The acting does not hold up. Plus, Freddy Krueger is in it for just over five minutes of screen time. For me, it just makes the moments we do see him super spooky. That's facts. He never really stays on screen for too long in any of the sequels either. 90% of every movie is just figuring out what the fuck is happening. Usually if you enjoy the villain himself, you'll find something to love about all the sequels. Even the Freddy vs. Jason movie. You gotta give it up though, Kruger is one of the most iconic slasher villains. Sure, but he's not the most iconic. That's highly debatable. Most kids have never seen a horror movie yet somehow know who Freddy Krueger is. Maybe because kids are immature and he looks like Ballsack Man. Ballsacks are very scary when you aren't expecting them. Yikes. Overall, it was a fine first pick. What are you doing, Donnie? I'm going with the most classic Halloween movie, Halloween. You can't just have the whole holiday. We're ranking movies. Title of the movie is Halloween, Sleepy. Try to keep up. Good one. How can you not have a Halloween movie in a Halloween movie draft? Which one are you going with? Joe had a point. You gotta go with the classics. I'll go with the original from 78. Fuck me. Two of the best slashers off the board already. 
Freddy Krueger may be easily recognized, but Michael Myers is the scariest slasher of them all. Dude just won't die. He doesn't even kill that many people in this one. It's quality over quantity in these early slasher films. I figured you would have known that from your first pick. He's right on this one. The kills themselves are so iconic that they defined an all new genre, specifically about gory knife kills and jump scares. Halloween is one of the biggest success stories of any movie. They had like no budget and managed to build an undying legacy. The music and the theme itself helped massively. Fine, it's a pretty great pick. The film is unmatched in the most important aspects of a slasher movie, creepiness and titties. My favorite genre cliche, at least when your wife or girlfriend makes you watch a horror movie at this time of year, you know you can always look at a nice rack at some point. Facts. Two great picks to start, boys. The slashers are flying off the board, so I think I'll have to take mine before they're all gone. Still some great options left. I know what I'm picking. Is Scream one of the choices you're thinking about? Oh shoot, you totally got me. That's what I'm going with. Specifically, the original Scream 1996. The franchise as a whole is wildly entertaining though. Even the newest one, Scream 6. Is that the one with Jenna Ortega? I'd like to see her genitalia. Ever since Wednesday, she's lived rent-free in this dude's head. Not only is it scary, but it's a comedy at times. I don't want to know how many sexually harassing phone calls this movie inspired. How many were done by you personally? A lot less since Color ID has come out. This movie also helped the entire genre out. By this time, Halloween and Elm Street movies had passed their prime through some iffy sequels. And this movie represented a resurgence for the slasher movies. Now, Ghostface is so iconic that you can't go one Halloween without seeing someone dressed up as him. That's because a five-year-old Chinese kid can make a thousand of those costumes for $10. Sure, it's a cheap costume, but you can't deny the film's influence on pop culture has been massive. I prefer Ghostface in Scary Movie. Although those movies are memes, you can't deny the greatness of this one. The cold open provided a huge shock to everyone because Drew Barrymore, was advertised as the star only to be killed so early. A great subversion for the audience. The film also pays respect to its predecessors throughout the duration. The question, what's your favorite scary movie, is pretty much the film's motto. What about want to play a game? He says that too, but I think another franchise did it better. Ghostface is just so iconic over the phone that anything he says will get referenced by everybody. Scream is a good pick, but I lied. I wasn't going to take it with either of my next two picks. Gasp. What are you picking instead? Well, I'll start with the mother of all slasher films, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Homegrown horror movies must hit extra hard, huh? They do. I remember everyone in Texas lining up to see this gem when it released. I also enjoy the remake that came out during my term as president. This movie is sick in the fucking head. I know, right? Isn't it great? Gross. I don't know about you guys, but this shit made me super uncomfy and I wouldn't go out of my way to rewatch it. Come on, oh pussy, you're really gonna chicken out on us now after we all pick basically the same type of movie? I wouldn't really consider this in the same category as any other slasher listed so far. Firstly, it centers around a whole family of psychotic cannibal killers, not just one main villain. This film was just ahead of its time. Leatherface provided all we needed in a standard slasher villain. The other weirdos just added to the chaos. I can hear what Barack is saying. The cringe coming off this film was almost too much at times. I'm glad the trends of these films followed Halloween instead of this one. Effects were great for the time, though. I hear you, but sometimes you gotta get freaky with the freaks. Most college kids are dumb as rocks, but the ones in this movie take the cake. Most of the victims walk directly into the cannibal's lair for no reason. They deserved all the torture they got, to be honest. All right, George, what's your second pick? I can't believe this one fell. Friday the 13th original. Great, now all the OG slashers are represented. Jason is another legend of the genre, even if he was a ripoff of Michael Myers. Fuck that, Jason brings a lot to the table. Like a machete in a hockey mask. I can't believe Obama is out here talking shit about Jason. You two have so much in common. What the hell do I have in common with Jason? Neither of you can swim. I can swim, you fucking bigot. Oh right, I was probably thinking of your personal chef. What a shame that he died so mysteriously at your residence. Are you calling me a murderer, you oversized Cheeto? Well, you have hung out with the Clintons plenty of times before, so I wouldn't put it past you. You also have the highest KD of anyone here. You've definitely smoked some people, bro, and not all of them deserved it. I'm not a fucking murderer. Well, not anymore, just get back to the movies, damn it. Yeah, so pretty obvious why I chose this one. Rip off or not, it's a legend of its own. Dude never chased anything, he just slow walked toward everyone with utter certainty of their deaths. 
Seems like there was a lot more dark magic stuff going on with Jason than any other slasher besides maybe Freddy. Freddy versus Jason was pretty good too. I wouldn't put it on my list, but it's pretty good. I don't respect it. Just like Alien versus Predator. Yeah, a little too WWE for a horror movie. For once I'm with you, Joe. It wasn't half bad. This movie was better for me at least. Camp Crystal Lake had a great vibe. The subplot of the revenge mother was another cool twist. Two good picks, George. You're back up, bro Obama. I think I'm gonna leave the slasher genre and head toward a true modern horror movie. I'm gonna go with The Conjuring. Spooky. A lot of modern horror movies kind of blow, but this one is tremendous. This whole horror universe is fucking baller. From Annabelle to The Nun, it's pretty much all bangers. The Warrens are such interesting characters. It feels even creepier when you know these are based on real people and allegedly real events. The amount of times I had to look away or even leave the room during my first watch was crazy. I would normally call you a pussy, but this shit had me flinch a couple times. Great writing. The world building made the scary parts hit so much harder. Probably the scariest haunted house in film history. I love the location. Just by looking around the property, you could tell instantly that something horrible happened there. That fucking tree made me want to become a lumberjack. That's a tree that was made for hanging. I love this movie. I actually watch it every single year around Halloween. With my dementia, it's like the first watch every time I see it. I can't do that again. That's fair. It's also fair that it's the first movie that really doesn't have anything to do with Halloween specifically, but provides the horror that you look for around this time. Paranormal stuff and demons are always a lot scarier than just some dude with a knife. What's up next, Donnie? I think I'll follow suit with Obama and go with another horror movie closer to today. My next pick is Insidious. Ah, little demon boy. Another modern masterpiece. That red demon is next level scary. That one jump scare that comes out of nowhere in broad daylight got me so fucking bad, dude. I really enjoy the interdimensional or different plane of existence parts of this movie. I still uh, prefer The Conjuring, but this is a close second for the scariest horror movie of our age. Fuck this. My life would be a living hell if my astral self was stuck with a demon every time I got sleepy. It sounds like you're about to ask us our star signs. Yeah, get your crystals the fuck out of here. I'm a Leo. Nobody asked. Such a Gemini thing to say. I don't really see a connection with this and Halloween. You can associate pretty much any horror movie with Halloween. The entire point of this fucking holiday is to put some fear in you. There's a difference between getting a jump and shitting your pants. Like Obama said before, it doesn't even need to be a horror movie to be a good Halloween movie. Well, you're up, Joe. Give us an example. The fucking greatest Halloween movie ever made fell all the way to the end of round two, and you should all be ashamed. The Nightmare Before Christmas. If it's the greatest, then how come you didn't take it first? I made a calculated gamble based on all of your sick obsessions of the slasher films. Holy shit, Joe's going sicko mode. How can a Christmas movie be in the Halloween movie draft? Wait, what? Bruh. Are you actually stupid? This is clearly a Halloween movie. What makes you say that? Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe the fact that they chant, this is Halloween a bunch of times, gave it away. Did you even watch this movie? Mm, no, I actually haven't. You suck dicks, plural. God, this fuck is off, why nobody will ever take you kids? seriously, you big old pumpkin. Oh my God, shut the hell up. What's so great about this film? It's a timeless childhood classic that covers all the bases of Halloween and has touched millions of hearts everywhere. It's one where not only the kids enjoy it, but the adults can tear up as well. I don't like stop motion. It makes me want to puke. You make me want to puke right now! Stop motion is great. It takes such skill and patience to make an entire stop motion film, and they're almost always worth the watch just for the artistic achievement alone. Donald is just a dumbass and doesn't respect the creepy yet satisfying aesthetic of the claymation. Characters are great too. Jack Skellington was a savage. Mid. I'm seriously gonna lose my shit if you don't hail to the Pumpkin King. Just pick another film, Joe. Fine, let's see, uh, oh yeah. Hocus Pocus. We knew it was coming. Joe loves this movie because the whole plot centers around kidnapping children. I wasn't too into it. More of a Halloween chick flick. That means he's calling you a bitch. I think this film is popular for a reason. I'm not sure about that. Shut your mouth. The three witches that suck off kids to become powerful are goaded. Joe, I'm gonna need you to take your meds. Come on guys, this film is a truly heartfelt comedy. Michelle and the girls found the witches' antics really funny. Anybody can enjoy them. They have spooky witchcraft. Yeah, no. The acting is great, the story's pretty okay, and the location of Salem, Massachusetts is really cool. And I love the cat that was a person. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You two really like this girly movie. We get it. You just don't respect family movies. Oh, yeah? How many children's movies have any of you appeared in? None. Me neither. Nope. Well, I was in Home Alone 2 and the little rascals get on my level. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Me too, but that's unsurprising. I do have an appreciation for family movies, and to prove it, with my next pick, I'll go with an old Disney classic. Halloween Town. I'll admit I didn't see that coming. Same here, that's an unexpected gem. Not as good as my two, but still up there, I guess. You're tripping. Halloween Town excels in the performances and sheer volume of costumes and fun themes. Unlike Hocus Pocus, this movie does witches right. The movie does feel like the setup of a Star Wars or Harry Potter of Halloween movies. Magical Ant shows up telling the protagonist she has special powers and should embrace them by leaving home and having a fun adventure. I could pass on it, but it's bearable compared to Hocus Pocus. You're just a Halloween Scrooge, George. All you like is when teenagers are brutally murdered. Shit's fire, though, isn't it? Correct. Can you at least admit that Halloween Town is better than Hocus Pocus? Obviously. Hmm, it's close. Come on, Barack. You know Hocus Pocus is the best of Halloween witch movies. Just fucking watch them both. I'm gonna have to take Halloween Town, though. No! There's just so much to like about Halloween Town as a location. All the monsters walking around fits the Halloween vibe very well. Ha <laughs> ha. Sucks to be wrong, doesn't it? Suck my Halloweeny. What do you got next, Barack? I'm gonna switch gears a bit. I'll take Cabin in the Woods. Nice. Is that the one with Thor? Yes, Chris Hemsworth is in the movie. The premise of this movie is bonkers. It's like Men in Black, but for horror movies instead of aliens. There are definitely some secret branches of the government, but nothing this crazy. The film itself has a lot going for it, but it feels like a Marvel horror movie. Too much comedy to ever get a scare. The movie is considered very meta, and there's nothing else quite like it, but in my opinion, it fits the Halloween narrative quite well, and provides a good laugh if you're tired of the standard horror or slasher film. The last act is completely off the rails and a fun watch. I love all the different monsters that the government workers and main characters have to face. Brock loves these contrarian films. I love getting more than I expected out of a movie. It's like trick-or-treating, but you find out this house gives full-size candy bars. Another good pick, Barack. Thanks, George. What are you doing next? First, I'll have to pay homage to the legend that is Saw. Jesus fucking Christ, Bush. Your list is gruesome. Should I be worried about your mental state? This dude watches wrecked threads on 4chan for sure. If I'm in the right mood. How to get PTSD from the comfort of your home? Yeah, I would highly suggest not doing that. Tis the season. George, you're all sorts of sick and twisted. Come on, you guys really don't like Saw? I would not go out of my way to watch it, no. If I was ever caught watching that, it would be international news. I think I'd rather be caught jerking it than caught watching Saw. Oh yeah, this thing sucked. That's probably why there's 10 of them. It's hugely successful, he's correct. Are you going with the original? Yeah, but the others have some great stuff too. There is evidently a large audience looking to see some dude's nuts get chopped off if he can't do a puzzle. I don't want to play this game. They almost always deserve it though. That's the whole point of Jigsaw's traps. I don't know if some dude committing insurance fraud deserves to get his limbs cut off. This is the goriest movie, bro. There's not many scares compared to the sheer amount of self-inflicted torture. I would say uh, this is more of a gory thriller than a horror movie. Still has the spirit of trick or no treat. I can get down and dirty with Saw every once in a long while, but some of the sequels are pretty unnecessary. What's next, bro? Hills Have Eyes? That's a good one, too, but there's not many Halloween vibes in the desert. Um, I'll go with Sleepy Hollow instead. There's a movie named after me? No, this was Sleepy when it was cool. You're lame. Gotta love Johnny Depp in literally any movie. This definitely has the spirit of Halloween, unlike some of George's previous picks. Pretty underrated movie, considering Tim Burton made it just like Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, true. Tim Burton's pretty much the goat of producing Halloween movies. The Headless Horseman brought an exciting and mysterious villain to the table. He was set up perfectly with Christopher Walken flashbacks. The film excels in visuals with great performances and is just generally really good. You really can't do much better than this cast. All heavy hitters. Vibes are on fleek. For setting and visuals, this is one of the best on the list. That's pretty much all we can say about it. Great movie, tons of nice head rolls. Back to you, Barack. Nice picks. I've been waiting on this one for a while. I'm gonna pick It next. Pick what? It. What? It, the title is It. The movie with the scary clown. Ah, I hate clowns. This movie is pretty solid. Pennywise is a huge threat. He steals the show and the kids. I don't like it. You gonna cry? You didn't mind when your buddy Epstein was stealing the kids. If he was wearing clown makeup, would you have stopped him? Maybe. 
The way he knew all the kids' worst fears and used it against them each individually was pretty bomb. It, chapter two, is pretty good too, but the original is the best. It does give you a good couple scares in the first watch. I like the way dude pokes his eyeballs out of his head. I really like the lore built around Pennywise from Stephen King's novelization. He's basically an immortal spirit that wakes every 27 years to feast upon scared children. He sounds unstoppable. Well, he was defeated by a group of kids. No major spoilers, George. It's not much of a spoiler. You know he'll be defeated by the end of the movie and just come back in 27 years. He still gets his fair share of kids' meals every time. Can we move on? I fucking hate clowns. Well, I'll tell you about an even scarier monster. How about the thing? Oh yeah, like Fargo, but with a spaghetti monster. What does this movie have to do with Halloween? I think it fits because it's a fun reminder that winter is coming. What are you, a Stark? A nightmare before Christmas is a fun reminder that winter is coming. This is just a terrifying horror movie in the Arctic. Regardless, it's a cult classic that I'm sure many people enjoy around Halloween, especially in parts of the country where it's already winter around this time. Uh, I'm with Donnie on this one. You're talking about the original one, right? Of course, the remake is whack. True that. The characters of the original are far superior. I gotta respect the pick. I will say that the effects were decades ahead of their time. All thanks to Stan Winston. You couldn't have done a movie like this without him. The alien monster thing was pretty awesome. I liked how it could perfectly imitate anybody, so the characters had to be smart in order to find it. R.J. McCready is a fucking boss. Yeah, Kurt Russell knocked it out of the park. This film flies under the radar a bit. Fair enough. What do you have for your last picks, Joe? I think I'll have to go with the fall favorite, Children of the Corn. Of course, Joe picks this one. It's his worst fear realized. Children that fight back. Very funny. Another Stephen King inspiration. This one is super cringe. It doesn't age as well as other old movies listed so far. The ultimate horror for people from Nebraska. Demon corn. Not really a film for religious types, I'll tell you. It has a good message overall. Is the message, don't be in a cult or burn the cornfield if it's cursed. Both are great lessons to live by. I don't think this one is too bad. Some fun moments. Like what, a grown ass man beating up some kids? Let's be honest, those kids needed a good beating. This one is a little silly to me. No way I'm letting a kid kill me. Awful pick, Joe. How are you gonna end this shit list? I think I'll end it off with the only Halloween relevant superhero movie, Batman. Okay, what Batman movie are you picking? There's so many great ones, but I'll have to go with the newest one with the dude from Twilight. The Batman, huh? That's an interesting pick. I would have respected it if you chose The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's a straight up better movie. I still really enjoy the new one. Plus, it's actually at the time of Halloween in the movie. There's no better trickster than the Riddler. He's all tricks, no treat. Joker is peak and can never be topped. There's still some Joker guys in this. Not the real Joker. We should have this debate with a Batman movie tier list. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. I'm so fucking down for that. Same here. Overall, this is a great Batman movie and a great Halloween movie with insane acting and directing. A great selection for the newest movie on any list. Your list is mid. Well, if you don't have a banger for your last pick, it'll be even worse. What do you got last, Donnie? Are you guys ready to be fucking flabbergasted by the secret goat of all Halloween movies? You have me intrigued. He's all talk, probably another shit pick like The Thing. The Thing is a great pick, but it's honestly nothing compared to my last pick. Gentlemen, I give you Van Helsing. Damn it. Oh fuck, that's right. I forgot all about this, Jim. Donnie is swinging for the fences with this one. Quite possibly Hugh Jackman's best role besides Wolverine. No shortage of monsters for Van Helsing to hunt in this one. I hate to admit it, but this movie was fucking legendary. It's an emotional roller coaster with fun characters and very great effects for its time. I can't really tell you what was bad about this. As a standalone adventure, it was nearly perfect. I don't think there has ever been a better depiction of werewolves, vampires, and even fucking Frankenstein in any other movie. The lady vampires made me scared and hard. New kink unlocked. I don't know how a film manages to be scary, funny, sad, and downright epic all at once. The jump scares got me so bad the first time around. I don't think there's really anything bad about this movie except for the fact that it didn't get a sequel. Yeah, I guess the Underworld series happened because of this. Most of those had shit effects, even though they were made after this movie. Kate Beckinsale couldn't carry the werewolf versus vampire movies just based on her hotness. She did for me. No character in any Underworld movie lives up to the characters in Van Helsing. Carl was the best sidekick best friend ever, bro. Somehow the best character in this movie is actually Dracula. The performance was Oscar-worthy and they don't really show his vampire form until the final battle, which is fucking tremendous. Music was great, too. I bumped the main theme from time to time. 
I'll give it to you, Donnie. This movie deserves way more clout. There's absolutely no reason this movie shouldn't be in the conversation for the best Halloween movie ever. It's hard to disagree with that, honestly. Try to follow that up, Barack. Good luck. Okay, here it goes. I'll finish it off with the silence of the lambs. No! Barack, you fucking prick. You actually took my next pick this time. Ha <laughs> ha, suck it, Bush. Brave of you to select this movie in this political climate. I hope your higher ups aren't upset with you for picking a movie that misrepresents a non-binary person. Bitch, you look like Buffalo Bill. It puts the orange lotion on its skin. Let's not pretend he picked this movie because of Buffalo Bill and not Hannibal Lecter. Facts, he is a legendary character. Too bad the sequel's blue chunks. That still doesn't take anything away from this one. The relationship built between Clarice and Hannibal during the investigation of Buffalo Bill was some of the most intriguing and thought-provoking interactions in all of cinema. Crazy how by the end of it, you're rooting for Hannibal to escape even though you know he's a fucking cannibal. He's like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. He's scary and he eats people, but you still respect the power he holds. I think it's because he eats people for a good reason most of the time. He could have just been saying that to make himself sound like he was above other cannibals. Pretty low bar. I like the part when that random asylum dude throws his load at the lady. Ha 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 You're a fucking animal. I'm Batman. No, you're not. Pretty good pick this late. Good fall vibes. Thanks. What's last, George? Give me a minute. I wanted the silenced lambs. Should we list movies ranked by most blood and guts for you? I'm still a bit concerned for you, bushy boy. Fine. I'll go with a more family-friendly one so I stay off a list. How about Ghostbusters? Are you talking about the new one with the ladies? That's the dumbest question you've ever asked. I would never lower myself to watch that diarrhea. Yeah, I'd rather die in a fire. The original is still great, though. I love that music, and the cast had a lot of good moments together. Just a bunch of bros catching ghosts to the sound of elevator music. That's the spirit of Halloween right there. I think George just threw the whole draft with that pick. Fuck you, Donnie. This movie is a fun watch, and the cast is low-key drippy. Maybe way back in the day, but I'd honestly rather watch these new age 3D animation Halloween movies like Hotel Transylvania. You better shut up about Ghostbusters or I'm going to have Air Force One TP your entire mansion. Go ahead. It'll probably be your best use of taxpayer money in a couple months. Joe, don't do it. It'll just boost his poll numbers. It's worth it. Maybe you're right. Well, the general consensus is that Bill Murray rules and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, fuck Donnie. Us three can suit up and play this new VR Ghostbusters game at my place. Sounds bomb. That does kind of sound fun. Can I join? No. Damn it. All great lists, guys. My list is pretty unbeatable. Nobody has a terrible list, but I don't like Obama's. It's too scary. Oh, if we're being honest, then I think Bush's list blows. The true legends will go for my list. This time we can vote in the comments on which list you think won the draft. I'll leave four comments down below of each list and whichever gets the most likes will be announced the winner. Look at my fucking lineup. You all know I win no question. Come on, man. If you don't vote for me, are you even into Halloween? Let us know what your favorite scary movie is in the comments, and I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. And give one of these movies a try if you haven't seen them. Except for Children of the Corn. You can skip that one. Hey. Bye, guys.